I will show you an amazing trick that can solve extreme Sudoku. And with that, it's solving time. First, you want to test how hard the puzzle is by looking for digit restrictions and easy solves if you can find any. So if you start up here on block one and look at these eights, you might see with these two eights and this eight, there's only two places for an eight in block two. So you want to mark that restriction. And then with these two eights and this eight, two places for an eight here in block nine. And then with this eight and this eight, only two places for an eight right here in block seven. Greetings, friend. I want to thank Aaron for creating this wonderful puzzle that features an amazing Sudoku trick that works on extreme puzzles, the hardest puzzles you can find. Now you want to continue to look for digit restrictions from one to nine. You looked at the eights. If you look where the ones can be, you want to see where there's only two possibilities in a three by three block. And with the ones, there are no blocks where you can make solves or or marks like there's three possibilities here three possibilities here doesn't work you go to the twos same thing you look around at least three possibilities or more in each block now if you look at the threes you will see with these two threes and this three only two possibilities for a three and block nine that's all the marks you make with the threes go to the fours even though you see a bunch of fours here there's three possibilities there you don't want to mark that, but with these fours, two possibilities right here in block nine. So mark it. Move on to the fives. You'll see with these two fives, two possibilities right there in block nine. No other marks you can make with the fives or solves. This puzzle's pretty hard. Move on to the sixes. These two sixes, two possibilities for a six right here in block two. And that's it. Move on to the sevens. Okay, with these two sevens, only two possibilities right there in block eight. And we've already marked the eights. Now you want to move on to the nines. Two possibilities for a nine in block three. And then with these nines, two possibilities here in block five. And that's it. Went through all the digits, one through nine. This is it. And all the marks, no solves. This puzzle is extreme. And now the question of the day. What did you do at this point in the puzzle? How did you move forward? Please, please share in the comments and help me grow the Internet's best Sudoku community. And I tell you is I have a five-step solving process. First, you look for digit restrictions, one to nine, make any easy solves. Then if you made a few solves, go back through and... See if you can make uh, all the easy solves as possible because then you want to slowly progress to the harder and harder strategies because they take longer to find. Then you'd look for pairs and triples by focusing on heavy houses. I'm going to tell you, you can mark these heavy houses like row two and row three, and you're not going to get anything out of that. And so then the next step, step four, would be look for advanced strategies. You look for either single can strategies or can uh, strategies that involve buy value cells like XY wings, remote pairs, XY chains. And it's not going to be anything to find unless you look for setters in 10. So let's look at these ones. Where can a one be here in puzzle? You'll notice there's lots of possibilities for the ones, right? And the idea is, if you look at the starting grid, it looks kind of funny. Hopefully, you you looked at this. You're like, this is weird, right? There's a big block right here, and it restricts these canets, like the ones, and the two like big pointing triples, right? And it restricts it here in block seven. Restricts it here in block three. That is by design. You want to take advantage of that. So what would create more restrictions is if you could see possibilities for canets that make pointing pairs. So with these ones, what would make a lot of restriction here in block three, block one, block seven? And it's if you created pointing pairs here in block six and in block eight. So if you could remove this cell and this cell, 
the eliminate candidates there, you see you have a pointing pair here going up the column and a pointing pair here going across the row. What cell sees both of these? Well, it's this cell right here or this one. But if you look at the ones, a one can't be there because of this one. What can be in this cell right here? You'll notice it could be a one, two, or a three, right? Can't be a four because of the four right there. Can't be a five, six, seven, eight, or a nine. So just a one, two, or three right there. So now you got to ask yourself this question with the ones. What if this is a one? If that's a one, what does this do to the puzzle? You'll notice all these cells wouldn't be a one, right? Okay, not a big deal until you notice this ends up being a pointing pair of ones. And so you can eliminate the ones right there. And you can put a one right here. Okay. And this ends up being a pointing pair of ones. You can remove the ones from right there. And you end up with a one right here. Not a big deal until you look up here in block one, right? You can put a restriction in block seven, block three. Ones can't be there because of the one right here. And ones can't be here because of the one right there. So you'd have no place to put a one in block one. Okay, so that tells you this can't be a one. It cannot be a one. What about the twos? What if you put a two right there? If you put a two right there, you want to make sure, hey, where can the, where are the restrictions for the twos, right? Twos are already in these blocks, but they're not in these cells right there. Okay, so you'd see with the twos, you can actually get rid of twos in these cells as well. If you're looking at the twos and you put a two right there, what would that do? It's going to end up making the same pointing pair problem, right? You would eliminate twos from all these cells. You can get a pointing pair of twos right here. So that wouldn't be a two. Forces a two here. Get a pointing pair of twos right here. That wouldn't be a two. Get two right there. Same problem, right? Because now this two and this two, twos can't be here. And they can't be in the column. You'd have no place to put a two in block one. So you know that this cell cannot be a two either. All right, so let's go back. And get rid of all these colors. And so... If you're a fan of Sherlock Holmes or Star Trek, uh, there's a famous quote. Eliminate the impossible, and what is left, however improbable, must be the truth. If you eliminate the one because it's impossible and the two that's impossible, the only other cell candidate that can be in the cell is a three. It has to be a three. And what you just did, what I just showed you, is called a forcing chain. By showing that a candidate is impossible in a certain cell, you can eliminate that candidate. So this now has to be your three. But you're not out of the woods yet. You're not out of the woods. Because now you got to look at the impact row, column, block. Aaron, three of this bone, but you got to see it's not really apparent what to do with it. So come up here to block six. Now you have these two threes here. Threes can't be in these cells. And these cells cannot be a one or a two either because... They cover that. So where can the one, two, or three go in block six? It has to be in these three cells right here, right? And this can't be a three. So this is a nice hidden triple. Hidden triple, one, two, three. Which means, since you have a four, seven, eight, nine in block six, this would be a five, six naked pair, right? And you could check out the naked pair, and if you find that as a naked pair, great. I saw the hidden triple first. And what does that mean? Well, since this is a five or a six, the fives are restricted to these two cells in block six. They're restricted to these two cells in block nine. So where can a five be in this column? Can't be here. Can't be here. Must be one of these three cells up here in block three. And since you have a five in that row, a six right there, this is your hidden single five. So now you can solve that for 
a5. All right, now look across row two. Really good setters, they throw you a bone. You find a reward, you find a solve, they give you a reward and more solving to do. You got a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This would be a one, two, or three, but the two's right there. So you know you can solve that for a two, and this ends up being a one, three, naked pair. Okay, now what else can we do? Well, with this two and this two, where can the twos be in block seven? They gotta be right there. And then with these twos, the two's gotta be right there, displacing that seven. Nice, so you solve the twos there. And then it would restrict twos to these two cells in block five and in block three right up here. So you still wanna get those solves in. And then go down to block eight here, impact, right? You had a seven there. Four cuts across, where can the four go? It's gotta be right here. Gives you a nice one six naked pair in row seven. And now with these two fours, you can displace the four right here, solve this cell for a four in block nine. And that just gives you a nice one eight naked pair to finish row eight. Okay, what else can you do with the fours? With these fours here? Two places for a four on block five. And looking at the impact with these fours, two places for a four in block two, because that four right there. All right, now let's check out the ones. With this one six naked pair, it acts as a pointing pair, right? Ones have to be in one of these cells. And if you don't understand the you know, naked pairs, hidden pairs, pointing pairs, this is a pretty extreme puzzle, but I'll help you out. Get my free Sudoku solving guide. I cover these top seven strategies that will build the foundation you need to start solving harder puzzles like this. This can't be a one. So now you got a pointing pair of ones here in block seven, right? Because this can't be a one. Since this is a pointing pair, ones can't be here. You end up with a pointing pair of ones in block one. They go with these ones. Where can the one be in block three? It's got to be right here. So you can solve that for a one. Displacing that nine. Displacing that two. And then just go impact row column block. That's got to be a 2, 3 because it can't be a 1 anymore. So the 1 has to be right here in block 6. And because of this 2, 3 and the 1, 4, 5, 6, 7 in the column, this has to be a 9 now. And then with those two 9s, that's your 9. This place is 8. This place is the 1. You see now with those marks you made, how quick it is to do the rest of the solving because of this 8. That's got to be a 1, displacing that 8, displacing that 5. And now you can disambiguate the 6 and the 5 right there. And so just keep hunting down the marks now, you know, and maybe you'll need another advanced strategy. Who knows? We'll see. What can these two be? Looks like you got a 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, need a 6 and a 7. Well, how about a 6 and a 2? And with this 6, there's your 6, there is your 2. Okay. After making that mark, you now you want to see what is going to be the impact here. So now notice, like with these ones, this one, you just make some marks until you can find another easy solve. You made these eights, so look at these eights. You know, eights got to be there. Okay. All right, now look at the nines, right? Because you saw the nine here and here. Nines got to be there in block one. And then with these nines, you can solve this for a nine. Displacing that one, displacing that eight. And now you can displace this nine. Solve your last nine right there. All right, see how that works? And then with this one, you can displace the one right here. Solve this for a one. And it just leaves you with this full house. So just count the digits. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't see a seven. That's got to be your seven. And this is going to be your three. In the corner, bum, bum, bum. And then with these threes, that has to be a three right there. Disambiguate the two, three here. Now you can displace that two. Solve this for a two. The four should still be there though. Sorry about that. And then you can look across here and you'll notice you just have a six or seven remaining. So you want to mark the six, seven real quick, but we're going to be able to make some more solves here. You got a one, two, three, four, eight, nine. You need a five, six, seven. You got the five, six right there. So you know that's got to be your seven creates another full house that means this has to be your three disambiguate the one and three right there nice look at impact row common block that's got to be a six that's got to be a one 
And with this 6 now, you know that's a 7. That's going to be your 6. And then continue on with the solves here. You want to look and see, you know, what else do we have? Just need a 4 and an 8 right there. With this 8, 8 can't be there, so that's got to be your 4. And that's going to be your 8. Displacing that 4, last digit here in block 2 is going to be a 5. All right. You can remove the 4 from right there. And then you just keep on looking for where the mark can be, right? Right here, what can this be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9. You need a 5 or a 7. Pull the 7 over from row 6. So that's your 7. That's going to be your 5. Go over to this block. 5 can't be there. It's got to be right there. And that's going to be your 6. I don't see a 6 in block 5. So there's your 6. And the last digit is an 8. Now see if you can spot the extreme strategy needed to solve this next puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.